Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Today we are doing another breakdown video. In our last video of Chicago Fire, many of you asked us to do some other shows, especially 911. It's a great show to watch. This is season three, episode 10, their Christmas episode of The Blue Lady. Let's take a look at what they're doing. Before we get into this episode, do us a favor, hit that subscribe, hit that notification, and look forward to a bunch more videos. So starting this scene, we have the lady waking up, getting ready for work. She gets up, starts doing her normal bathroom routines. She brushes her teeth and starts to get dressed, and looks in the mirror and sees that she's blue. Completely freaks her out, so she dials 911. As the fire guys arrive on scene, the knock on the door, this is most likely dispatch is an unknown. What do you call this? You know, is this a sick person? She doesn't seem to be sick. She's conscious, she's alert, she's oriented, or is it an unknown incident? So not only are the medics gonna show up, but the fire department's gonna show up for some backup. They knock on the door, they come on in, and start doing the assessment. Now, the blue color that she has, mm, that's where I kind of question. You can get cyanosis to the fingertips, you can get it around the lips. The skin can turn in like an ashen gray, almost kind of a blue tinge, but to have it blue like this, almost like a, an, an avatar, is a little unrealistic. But let's go with it, let's see what they're gonna do about it. They put what looks to be a pulse ox, but they call it a CO monitor to determine what is going on. They're gonna check their hemoglobin. They immediately knew something was wrong when she's this cyanotic and she is conscious, alert, and oriented. So the fire department does a real good job here too. The medics are doing their job. They're doing the assessment. They're focused on the patient. The fire guys are there for support. They break off <laughs> and this cracks me up. She gives them attitude right from the get-go. Not only is there her house a mess and she's embarrassed about that, but she makes a comment of, I mean, what kind of loser has to work on Christmas? We all work on Christmas. We're an EMS. It's 24 seven. I love that they included that in this show. It's something that we joke about all the time. Very good on them for doing that. So the fire guys break off, they start doing the scene assessment, and they determine what the issue is. The medics were pretty good at figuring it out without it, but now they got a definitive diagnosis. They find it is from the benzocaine she's been using for that jaw pain she's had. So she's overused the benzocaine. And if you read the description of any of those benzocaine if you go to Hippocrates or you even look on the side of the box, the severe reaction is methohemoglobin anemia. I know it's a big word. I had to look it up multiple times and I'm probably not saying it right now. So methohemoglobin is a form of hemoglobin that has been oxidized. Unlike normal hemoglobin, methohemoglobin does not bind to oxygen. As a result, cannot deliver oxygen to the tissues. That's why you get that blue-like tinge going on in the body. So once they determine what the issue was, she actually goes into seizure. And that's what we expected her to do. Having this much cyanosis, you're not getting a whole lot of oxygen to the tissues, including the brain. So you're gonna have that altered mental status. This one goes right into seizure. So they put her underground, they start treating her. They put oxygen on right away. Even though she's not absorbing it well, they know she's gonna need oxygen. Oxygen therapy is very good. They're gonna start an IV. Looks like an 18 gauge needle. And they do a little bloodletting, we all do. But that's where they get the definitive diagnosis with the benzocaine and that chocolate colored blood determines that she is overdosed and they can treat that. Now, here's where I've never treated it before. I've never seen it like this. They talk about methylene blue. I don't carry that in my toolbox here. We do have a lot of tools in our toolbox, a lot of different medication, but that's more of a medication for us that's gonna be at the emergency room. And even then, we're gonna to have to call down to the pharmacy to get that. It's not something we hold on hand. So I'm interested to know if you guys carry methylene blue. They do treat it appropriately. According to all the resources that I looked up, that's exactly how you need to treat it in this emergent situation, but I don't carry it. I'm wondering if you guys do. So they start an IV, give her the medication, and she immediately changes. Again, because I don't use it that well, I'm gonna kinda assume that this is like waking up a diabetic with glucose or giving Narcan to an overdose and uh, it, it immediately changed her. Does it come back from the seizure? Does she have any lasting effects? She's obviously gonna need to be transported. She's gonna need to do a follow-up to get an ABG just to make sure that her lab work is back to normal. But this is a cool episode. It's one that we haven't seen. We've all seen those patients that are different colors though. I've seen people that were orange because of a drug overdose on maybe Cipro. They start with orange pee, but they turn orange or beta carotene. Uh, I've seen you know, liver failure, those yellow people that turn with the yellow eyes and then they turn yellow skin. Those can be pretty serious. When you walk through that door and you see that, you need to be prepared and go ahead and treat that. So this is 911 on Fox. 
Very cool episode, very unique. Probably one of the once in a lifetime kind of things that we see. Appreciate you watching. This is the breakdown on Heroes Next Door. Do us a favor once again, hit that subscribe, hit that notification, and we'll keep bringing you some more videos.